Hi everybody, it's Jodie here, Decorous Vintage Designs and in today's makeover we're going to be making over this little wardrobe behind me here and we're going to do something really artsy and fun with it today. Alright so to start this project today I am going in with buttercream which is an off-white colour, you know creamy colour and I am not using any water, I am just brushing it straight on there with a synthetic brush and I am following the grain. Once it had dried I misted my piece with water and I chopped up some square little pe pieces of cardboard, you can use kitchen squeegees or you can use cardboard whatever and I got Plum Crazy which is a deep fuchsia colour and I just started applying it with the cardboard just going in different directions creating different textures and then I went over that with Amethyst which is a very vibrant purple and just started blending some of those colours together started bringing some of the colours out into the edges and this process is a little bit time consuming but you get some really cool texture and effects with your paint. I applied a little bit of pink champagne in the middle there and then Bunker Blue, sorry, Bunker Hill Blue in the top left corner and brought that downwards. I'm just having a play here. This is really a definitely a crazy creative process video. Um, I just wanted to let you guys into how I sort of create these kind of sort of looks sometimes when I'm layering colours. And this base layer was really interesting. I had a canvas idea in mind to start with. It didn't turn out to be the finished product, but it did help me um, create some cool layers. And then I just got a window squeegee, you know, something that you clean a car window with. I think it was a pound from the shop. Um, I made sure that it was totally totally wet and then I just started sort of brushing that all around, blending the paints together, creating some more cool patterns and I also had a rag to hand which I would clean the excess paint off of and then I came in with some Dixie Belle blue. So obviously I'm using a lot of colours today guys. Uh, if, you know, I don't expect you to go out and buy every single colour. What I would suggest is use what colours you have to hand, have a play and see what happens. So in the middle of this piece I continued with the Plum Crazy and I also mixed it in with some of the pink champagne. I can't remember if I said soft pink before but sorry it is pink champagne that I'm using. And again I'm just squiggling and layering colours on top of each other and just having a really good play. My hands get super messy <laughs> which is fine and yeah I'm just having a play here and then I'm also around the uh, outer edges I'm bringing down some Bunker Hill Blue and some of the Dixie Belle Blue and using my window cleaner squeegee thingy again to blend it all out and create some interesting effects.
I would have definitely have preferred to use a window, um, not a window squeegee, I would have definitely have preferred to use a kitchen squeegee for this, you know, one of those rubber square thingies that you get in the kitchen to mix stuff with, um, but I didn't have one to hand in my workshop, so the cardboard worked fine. If you just find that your cardboard gets a little soggy, then just replace it with a new piece. It's as simple and as easy as that, so just use stuff that you have lying around the house. All right, so then I used some Dixie Belle Best Dang Waxing White and just applied it everywhere. And what this will do is it will soften and mute the colors a little bit. Also, because the wax is water-based, it means that I can apply layers of paint over the top without any issues. And that will also soften whatever paint I put over the top as well. So I decided it was looking a little bit too rustic and patchy for my taste. I wanted to bring this together a little bit. So I decided to get my mermaid tail, which is a green turquoise. And honestly, it's a beautiful color. I find it doesn't always do so great on camera for some reason. There's something about the pigments that I don't always capture fully on camera, but it is much, much deeper in person. It's a very deep turquoise. And just with a chip brush, I'm applying that at the top. Um, I'm using a little bit of water to get it moving. And yeah, I'm just going to apply apply an extra layer on top of this. The reason why I love the chip brushes is because they're inexpensive, I use them all the time. They're also natural bristled, which means they've got a bit of a scratchy texture to it, which then creates well more texture um, and then in the middle I went in with some pink champagne and a lot of water and just started getting that dripping actually I think I put pink champagne there and decided I, I didn't really like it so I just decided to drip it um, that's something that you can do sometimes and I just I was really just having a play here I'm coming in with a little bit of amethyst around those edges and blending it into a little bit of the mermaid tail When doing a look like this, don't feel like you have to go in and blend everything all at once. You can literally come in with a bit of mermaid tail, a bit of amethyst, back to mermaid tail, then to plum crazy, pop a little bit of plum crazy at the top, pop a little bit in the middle. You know, you can work in sections and layer that way. So don't ever feel like you've just got to be really quick and put in blocks of color all in one go. What I sometimes did was dip my brush in amethyst and then pink champagne, so it, I kind of double dipped it. Um, I also did the same with plum crazy and pink champagne and blended some of that into the amethyst. And that is just to get, you know, different variants of color. Just remember, you might feel like you're copying, um, you know, covering up some of the colors underneath, but don't worry about that because we're going to bring them all together in the end and then we're going to sand back and all of those colors will start to peek through. So you're not hiding anything. Well, you are, but you're only hiding it temporarily and then it will be brought back through at the end. What I also did here was dip my chip brush into Bunker Hill Blue and then also the Dixie Belle Blue which is obviously a lighter blue and then start blending that into the Plum Crazy. I want you to notice that my blending is by no means perfect and it's very very patchy and that is necessary to get a very rustic layered look. I 
I wanted to bring a little bit more drama into this so I decided to use um, some Florida orange which is a very bright pigmented orange and it's very very vibrant and again I just got a chip brush and I started applying this in random areas dry brushing in some areas putting it on thicker in other areas and you know I wasn't overthinking it I was just kind of putting it wherever I felt like really there was an aspect here at this point where maybe I could have walked away and left this I feel like I could have probably walked away after that second layer you know after the second base but sometimes I don't know when to walk away so I just kept going and I just wanted to see what the outcome was of this One thing I will say with the Florida Orange is that I am using up and down brush strokes, not left and right. And in fact, I did that with most of these layers other than the one with the window squeegee. And um, that, will, that layer will be brought back through again, but for the rest, I am just following the grain. And then grabbed some really gritty sandpaper. I think this was 100 grit and really went to town on this. I let some of the wood poke through um, to get that kind of rustic door kind of style, you know, the kind of colorful Moroccan rustic doors. Um, and also all of the other paint layers, including the cream started to poke through. And I really wanted this quite scratchy to make it look like worn down wood grain. At this point, I felt like I needed saving because I was loving where this was going. I was loving the colors, but I just wasn't quite feeling like it was being brought together very well. So I went in with another layer and this time it was a some more mermaid tail again. I used my water mister to make it drip and then I used a brush to drag it down so that the mermaid tail was more of a wash and was quite translucent. If you notice here the mermaid tail is thicker at the top and then getting lighter and lighter as it goes down. If you want a really drippy look then actually you could mix your water with vinegar and that will give you some really cool spindly drips. I then went ahead and did the same in the middle, although it's a little bit thick here, I think I probably went in a little too heavy handed. Dipped my brush in both, um, I think it was Plum Crazy and the Pink Champagne and just started using water to blend that out and make it really drippy and make it, as again, more of a wash and more translucent. I then did the same at the bottom again with Bunk Hill Blue and Dixie Belle Blue and just started, I uh, started brushing from the bottom and upwards. So I'm really just going in with all of the uh, colours that I went in with before, just making them more translucent. And here's the finished look. So I really hope you guys again enjoyed this video today. I This was actually a really fun piece. It was a challenging piece to bring it all together, but I thoroughly enjoyed working on it. Let me know in the comments if the rustic boho look is for you and also as always guys happy painting and look after yourselves bye bye